Previously on Threshold. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Caffrey, just become the most important person on the planet. Dr. Caffrey wrote the protocols we'll be implementing tonight. We don't have time for fear. We don't have the, the luxury of self-doubt. We're approaching the ship. We had to train them. Someone's trying to unzip our DNA strands and reassemble them. Blew up his damn ship. Why come here? Looks like Gunnison left us a parting gift. Why don't you come back tomorrow afternoon? We'll run another round of tests. I just don't feel like myself anymore. I'm scared too. But we're gonna stick together. You're one of us. No. I'm not. Oh my god. Oh my god. Some good news, some bad. Oh, you know I thrive on the bad. According to your EEG, your theta brain waves are still on speed. The good? Your scan's clean. No tumors or tissue aberrations. I got your blood work back. No genetic mutations whatsoever. Same with Lucas and Kavanaugh. What do the brain waves mean? I don't know yet. Theta waves move faster when we're very relaxed or near sleep. Beta waves dominate when we're alert and awake. Who knows what this alien signal might have done to you? Any more bizarre dreams? No. Luckily, the three of you were only exposed to a videotape for a few seconds. The crew of this ship was directly exposed for a prolonged period of time. Their DNA is completely transformed. Any change in Gunnison? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's still in a comatose state. His brain is damaged but functional, but you know those bullet holes you blew into him? They healed. What? Are you kidding? Uh, apparently, Gunnison's traded his genetic structure for strength and the power of regeneration. So the six missing crewmen are running around out there like Superman? Well, I wouldn't say Superman. They just won't be making as many Blue Cross co-payments as you and I. You still haven't found any of them? We're still surveilling their homes. To be continued. Mm -hmm. As part of their surveillance, our agents are monitoring all emergency radio calls in the vicinity of the crewmen's homes. We got a hit? Possibly. Agents at the home of crewman Thomas Sanford in Gladstone, Virginia, picked up on an odd police call at a fast food joint. Two towns over. This is a security tape? Yeah. Whatever he's on makes PCP look like baby aspirin. Do we know where he went? He was found in a storeroom with his head imploded. The bystander that called 911, she said his face was deformed. Deformed how? She didn't say. But watch this on slow speed. Fractal pattern. The alien's calling card. We found ourselves another crew member. An American ship is blasted by a signal from a UFO who found the crew dead except for six who were missing and another who escaped. We naturally presumed that these men were also dead. Then one showed up at your house. I was upset and disoriented. They tried to kill you. That's all he came for. I'd be dead right now. Then how the hell did he know where to find you? Well, I'm still working on that one. And what about the rest of them? What are they up to? Looks like now we have one less crewman to ask. If this man in Virginia is crewman Sanford, that leaves us five alien infectees to find. Well, either way, it's time we step up from basic surveillance to a more proactive hunt. We can't just wait till the others turn off if they're out there with that kind of strength. Does your threshold plan cover this circumstance? 
Yes, we'll set up a network of data miners to monitor all media outlets and emergency response frequencies nationwide. JT? 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 I can't even read when I'm on the road, let alone take a nap. How did I drift off? Well, what's it been, five days since we were on that ship? Have you even slept one decent night since then? Oh, sleep is for the week. I'm fine, don't worry. Human survival may depend on you and this plan of yours, so as your doctor, I'm ordering you, get more sleep. Do you have another dream? Yeah. No glass trees, uh... I was at work and I, I got lost and this boy was following me. Hmm. A child following you at work. Well, maybe we can just chalk that one up to your biological clock. That's original. Did anyone touch the body? No. Our agents were first responders, showed U.S. Marshal credentials, said this involved a fugitive. Local cops are relieved, less paperwork. U.S. Marshals? I thought our cover was FBI. Body's back there. What are the casualties? Broken man's nose and a couple of ribs, and Kitty threw in the hospital with a broken collarbone. This is the other clerk that was on duty. She said she only talked to the top cop. Body of a white male, approximately 180 pounds. Arterial blood spray on the wall, approximately two feet in length from the base of the mirror to where we learned that Toto bites it. Body twisted, partially prone. He's mutilated. And then Cal was like, hey, and he was all like, ah, and threw Cal over the counter on top of the fryer, inches away from me. Did the attacker say anything? Not that I heard. Was he on drugs or something? Because everyone said he looked like he was tweaking. We don't know. Is that him? No, Jerry's older than that dude. Jerry? Jerry Dalton. Local guy who comes in every week for Fajita Friday, always cleans up after himself, and then bang, he's the Hulk. Do you know if he's a sailor? No, he's like a janitor. Where? Weymouth Military Academy, just up the street. This man is not a Bighorn crew member. No, he's a townie. Uh, protruding bone, distorted features. I've only seen these kind of mutations once before, on the dead men on that ship. How quickly can you autopsy his body for confirmation? Within hours of you getting me back to my lab. I'll get you a chopper. Molly, hold on now, wait a second. If this man wasn't a Bighorn crew member, how did this happen? The only cause of this genetic mutation we're aware of is the alien object signal. So either it appeared here again, or there are other infectees from the Bighorn that we don't know about. We're on our way to the school right now. All right, what do you need us to do? The night of the incident, both the FAA and Coast Guard gave us reports stating no people were in the vicinity of the Bighorn while it was exposed. Check their accuracy. 
Okay, we're on it. Your cover is Molly Caffrey, U.S. Marshal. <sighs> Thanks. We're gonna need enough men to secure the campus and a med tech to take blood samples. Done. Jerry, Dalton's been facilities manager longer than I've been dean. He worked hard, never caused a problem. We need to sequester the campus and interview the students. No, that won't be difficult. This is a leave weekend. There are about 28 cadets and four faculty members on campus. We would like to get blood samples from everyone as well. All parents sign a release for regular mandatory drug testing, including blood if needed. Good. Our cadets exhibit discipline. I would have a hard time believing that any of them are involved in anything illegal. I'm hoping to find nothing unusual with your cadets. Janklo, Arroyo, fall in. Yes, yes sir. sir. Commander Fox said you're a squad leader, Cadet Janklo. Have you noticed anything strange in your squad lately? Strange man. Odd behavior and fighting? No, ma'am. The fight will get them 18 miles of running. Most kids your age are playing video games or hanging at the mall. This is top-notch preparation, Marshal Caffrey. For the military? For helping rid the world of terrorists and safeguarding our democracy. It's a big goal for a high school freshman. Ma'am, my father told me that goals can't be too big. My father said something similar. After Marshal Caffrey finishes with her questions, you are proceeding directly to the infirmary for a blood test. Yes, yes sir, Commander So, uh, when was the last time you saw Mr. Dalton? In our dorm, ma'am, fixing stuff. And how do he seem to you? I'm busy, ma'am, like always. Has anything happened at school lately that seemed weird? Or... Nothing I can think of, ma'am. Molly. Just one minute, Josh. <clears throat> anything unusual in Dalton's quarters? I have beer, tools, and porno. I guess poster boy from Blue Collar usual. Check with the techs taking magnetic readings. If the alien ship made an appearance, the signal will be sky high. All right. The Coast Guard GPS log conforms with the Baltimore port vessel tracking data. No other sea craft was within a 10-mile vicinity of the Bighorn the night it was exposed to the alien signal. I can only imagine how the signal affected marine life in the area. Well, don't bother. It wasn't Flipper that went all postal in the taco dive. True, but a mutated Charlie Tuna could end up on any of our plates. So... A good point, Lucas, but we need to prioritize infected humans first. Well, then I'll need data to check against the FAA flight schedules. I got a printout of the surveillance radar from Maryland Air Traffic Control. It's not Maiden, is it? I'm not quite sure what that means. The Maiden radar system, it's ancient. There are lots of outages. Can I, please? Oh, cool. Now, this route center uses the newest radar system. Accurate and very readable. Hey, you know, I thought we all agreed yesterday that the best use of my mathematical genius was deciphering the fractal pattern. Um, now, I'm confused as to why Caffrey pulled me off that project to now do what is basically uh, clerical work. Believe it or not, Analyzing NTSB documents is new for me too, Dr. Ramsey. But there are six of us on the red team who actually know what this threat is about. Our agents and staff have top secret clearances, but they are given information on an as-needed basis. None of our staff will hear the word extraterrestrial. So if we're going to uphold the threshold plan tenets of preventing mass panic, we're all going to have to widen our job description. Okay, I was just asking. Uh-oh. What? There's a discrepancy. A Marisky Flight 23 diverted from its path because of an air pressure pocket. Within a mile of the Bighorn. At 10.20 p.m. That's when the alien ship appeared. This must be our link to Molly's dead deformed guy in Virginia. And this could mean we've got a plane load of alien infectees. I'm anxious to see our cadets cleared. Wait, it shouldn't be long. We're rushing the samples back to our lab. Now, I interviewed all the cadets, but one of them didn't show up to give his blood sample. Who? Ensign Jordan Peters, grade eight. Well, it's out. It was 10 minutes ago. I'll go to the dorm. I'll bring him here myself. If you can't find him, Commander, please call me immediately. I'll find him. Peters, is that you? Why aren't you in your dorm? Cadet, this library is closed. Cadet Peters, do you hear me? Step away from that computer, turn to attention, explain why you have violated curfew. We have a federal investigation going on here, son! <laughs> One of our men heard a disturbance and found this. Isn't this building locked after hours? It was. Someone shouldered the front door. Commander Fox was looking for a cadet who skipped his blood test, Jordan Peters. I haven't been able to reach Fox on his cell. 
there's a sort of wide vicinity. I saw that mask in a dream. Worn by a boy, have you? No. No dream since the first one. Anything else besides a mask? He, he wanted me to see something. I don't know what. Can you uh, tell where the struggle started? Yeah, positioning of furniture, blood drop direction. That's here right at this desk. Yeah, it's still warm. I'll take it and run its recent activity. You find Peters and Commander Fox. Okay, call me if you find anything weird. That'll be our motto. When did you last see your roommate? I haven't seen Ensign Peters since third mess, sir. I assumed he put in late for weekend leave. Did he say anything to you at dinner? Only that he was going to the computer lab, sir. For what? Didn't say, sir. Well, you both have computers right here. Uh, that's right, sir. But cadets can only access the internet in the computer lab. Sir? Yes, Royal? Jordan Peters is my friend. But I am bound by the honor code to inform you that he'd been acting strange ever since you marshals got here, sir. How so? Can't really say, sir. He uh, hasn't been himself. That flight 23 is data recorder. I had to ground the plane. We cross-checked the flight's passenger and crew list with the school student and staff roster. There's no overlap. Why do they call them black boxes if they're orange? <laughs> Maybe because the only time they look at it is after it's charred black. We have to be careful. It's possible that this has captured the alien signal. Um, I'll route its data through an audio filter program. Eliminate any specific signal frequencies. How long will that take? A few hours. Okay, I'll be here. I'm about to interview the pilot. Well, you're not including me. Well, you want in, Ramsey? Isn't this beneath your mathematical genius? Well, of course it is, but I'm also a linguist. I don't know what you're thinking doing the interview without me. Okay. Fine. It was a pretty, uh, pretty routine flight. Um, all I can recall is there was a slight reroute uh, due to an air pressure pocket. It delayed our arrival slightly. Did you hit any turbulence during this reroute? Excuse me? Turbulence. Um, yeah, we had a, a little patch. Um, but most flights have some bumpiness at some point, you know? And, gee, I wish I could be more help. I have no idea what you guys are looking for. Maybe nothing you know about, Captain. We're taking a look at the black box now. Please? The flight data recorder? Huh. I, I've never heard of uh, reviewing the FDR for an uneventful flight. Uh, is this a uh, Homeland Security matter? That's correct, Captain. What part of Southern Ohio are you from? <sighs> Loveland. It's right outside of Cincinnati. How'd you know that? I'm a linguist. <laughs> wow, you're a pretty good one. I haven't lived in Ohio in almost 30 years. A word? Excuse me. He's, he's hiding something. How do you know? Inconsistent language choices. I didn't hear any inconsistency in what he said. No, no, it's not with what he said, it's how he said it. Early in the interview, when he wanted you to repeat a statement you made, he asked, excuse me. But after, when you mentioned the black box recorder, he said, please? Okay. Please, as a clarifying question, is a common Southern Ohio, Kentucky regionalism. People slip into regional vernacular when they're either angry, tired, or nervous. And Captain Mancini didn't appear to me to be angry or tired. We'll keep him here until Lucas gets us the black box data. The last command was uh, backslash 364. And yeah, that's it. Rush it. Marshal Caffer, ma'am. Ryan. Uh, sorry to interrupt, ma'am, but you asked me to come to you straight away with anything unusual. Come in. A member of my squad is unaccounted for a curfew. Was it Jordan Peters? That's right, Ensign Peters. And I can't find Commander Fox. We're looking for both of them. It'll be okay, you can go back to your dorm. Well, one other thing, ma'am. What is it? Uh, sounds silly. 
I was in the library today, and a bunch of books were on the floor in this weird design. Show me. Yes, ma'am. Don't let anyone touch that computer. Where did you see the shape? Uh, right back there, Marshal Kaffer, ma'am. What's going on, ma'am? Just shut up and stay back. Okay, I'm back. Do exactly what I say. Roll that up. Faster. Light the map on fire. Ma'am? Now! You okay? I'm fine. Uh, test his blood. You didn't fire your weapon. No, it wasn't my best recourse. I had six rounds and a dozen attackers. Uh, plus, they were children. They're just kids. They're probably all infected. All right, the campus is well secure, okay? We can't leave. Let's head to the infirmary so we can get out of Peter's. Oh, yeah, hold up. Baylock called. And they found a plane that flew near the Bighorn signal. Okay. Let's take this one crisis at a time, huh? Look, I don't know what Janko or those guys were doing. I swear, ma'am. Why'd you skip the blood test? I didn't want to get kicked out of school for dusting. For what? Inhaling cans of computer duster. You weren't afraid of dying from huffing propellant, but you were afraid of getting caught? I know I was stupid, ma'am. I, I heard a couple kids talking about dusting. You know, they said you couldn't get caught. Because it won't show up in urine tests, but the propellant does appear in your bloodstream. Y yes, sir. And why were you in the map room? Well, I knew I'd get busted for skipping the blood test, so I figured I'd hide out there and sneak off campus the next day. I'd tell them I forgot to file my leave paper. Are you, are you gonna arrest me? I don't think Peters is infected. I agree. I'm gonna keep me here under guard just to be safe. Can you imagine going to a school like this? I don't have to. Any sign of the cadets who chased me? No, not yet. I don't know how they escaped that library building. Caffrey. Okay. Thanks. I asked one of our lab techs to decipher the commands Jankel used in that computer. Yeah? He was trying to override the system's outgoing firewall to send a mass email. What was he trying to send? I don't know. He didn't download it into the computer. You had a change of clothing? Yeah, in the van. I bring one whenever I travel more than 20 minutes from home. That's a good thing this wasn't a 19-minute drive. 
Your smirk would be so much more effective if you weren't soaking. Commencing reroute. Vertical acceleration, equipment position, airspeed fuel flow, all normal readouts for the first three hours and change. And then we get to 10.23 p.m. What the hell's that? It stays like this for 4.2 seconds. And these guys saw it. You were right, Ramsey. The pilot lied. Hey, don't you guys forgot? What's going on? Hey, whoa, whoa! Hey, what are you doing? Hey, no, 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 you can't take my blood without my permission. It's against union rules. I don't care about your union. You lied to us. Hey, listen to me. You got the wrong guy. Aim at his head. If he makes a sudden move, blow it off. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. What happened on that flight? It was intermittent electrical fault. Just a couple of seconds. It happens all the time uh, on these old planes. Hey, no, no! Ah! Listen, it could have been anything. A chafed wiring, a corroded connector, loose lugs. Are you saying there was nothing unique at all about this disturbance? It created a pattern. It was weird. It was like, like a three-armed starfish or something. And the audio component? We were wearing headphones. Tell Fenway to test that ASAP. Yes, sir, right away. Why did you lie to us? The co-pilot and I had a couple of drinks before we boarded. Just a couple. You didn't want to report the problem and bring attention to yourself. Risk a urine test. Engineering crews catch these things during maintenance. Look, I'm not a terrorist. You gambled with the lives of a plane load of people. What's the difference? I'm three years from retirement. Not anymore. The pilot's blood alcohol was 20 proof, but no sign of genetic mutation. We've hit a dead end. No, we didn't. What have you got? I started poking around in the lives of the Flight 23 passengers using their social security numbers. It's amazing the information we're privy to here. I mean, it's, it's just ripe for abuse, but... <laughs> you and Ralph Nader should have a nice chat about that over some tofu. <laughs> All right, tough guy. I'm guessing you value your rights as much as I do. Yeah, and I'm assuming you value your life as much as I do. And if that means taking a look at some credit card defaults to catch these alien freaks, I don't care. All right, fine. I'm just saying we got to keep ourselves in check, or else we're the government conspirators we always feared. Point taken. What have you got? There's a boy on the flight. He's listed as Joshua Haber. Haber's his mother's name. Joshua's legal name is Foster. So? So Joshua Foster is a sixth grader. At Weymouth Military Academy. I've got to call Caffrey. Yeah. Uh, are you sure Joshua Foster wasn't one of your pursuers? Yes, I'm wrong clearly from today's interviews. Wow. I have something I want you to look at. Have you ever seen this? That's spyware. Spyware? It popped up when I was burning a CD for my friend. When? On the way back from my mom's, on the plane. When that design came up, my laptop froze. Did the spyware make a sound? Not until later, here at the dorm. It was like, like. Like knife sharpening? Yes, ma'am, just like that. Tell me what happened then. I had some homework on my computer, so I tried again to unfreeze it. Some of my friends tried to help, but all we were getting was that spyware, so I called squad leader Janklo. Was Mr. Dalton there? Janklo called him in because he's good with computers. Mr. Dalton entered some commands, and then that sound started. For how long? A few minutes. Then Mr. Dalton left. Any of the boys, your friends, were okay? Yes, sir. Where's your laptop now, Josh? Jenko took it. The library secured in case Jenko shows up. It doesn't matter. We have a canvas full of phone jacks and an alien infectee trying to email the signal to God knows how many people. All right, we'll secure every building then. No, we don't have the time. We have to shut down the power now. Get every wire, destroy all the phone jacks. I don't care if you have to burn them. All right, stay alert out there. Do we get all the computers in the dorms? Yeah, all of them except Josh Foster's. We got another problem. The firing range is broken into. Didn't we use a phone line? They already pulled out, but weapons and ammo are missing. 
I was told every building was under guard. They are. I had two guys at that range, and somehow they slipped in. It's like these kids are ghosts. I want double reinforcements on every building. It's done. We set up Wi-Fi jammers. We're trying to cut the phone cable line, but it's buried 20 feet underground. It'll take a few hours. We can't wait. If that signal gets on the internet, in 24 hours, it could reach 33% of the country's internet users. How did you reach that estimate? I'm using the Paris Hilton sex tape as my distribution model. Doctor. We got our first positive on the triple helix gene mutation. A cadet, Brian Janklo. Anyone else on campus? Not so far. How about Mr. Galton? As expected, he was positive too. His cells are still mutating post-mortem. Anything else of note on his autopsy? Yeah, I completed it in record time. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yeah, one inconsistency. You said that Dalton lived and worked for years on campus, but his lungs are in advanced state of corrosion from asbestos. Asbestos? Th that hasn't been in school buildings in decades. I know. I also found traces of silica in his lungs. That's a main ingredient of cement. I know how these kids are disappearing. Lots of old institutions have underground utility tunnels. Dalton was a maintenance man. He must have logged a lot of hours in them. That explains why our guys couldn't find the cadets. Steam tunnel entrances are usually hidden. Yeah, ironically, keep nosy kids out. Any more detail from your dream? No, just a boy in that mask. He kept trying to have me see something behind a door. Then I woke up. Why would he appear to you and not Lucas or me? Who knows? Uh, I mean, maybe I was more affected by the signal. I mean, why would you? We were all exposed to that videotape for the same amount of time, and we all had that same uh, glass forest dream. Yeah, but our DNA is different. Plus, I'm female. You're a what? And we all know gene mutation is subjective. Then these guys are applying the first rule of military strategy. Get inside your enemy's head. Literally. I mean... What if it wasn't them willing themselves into our dreams, but us summoning them? And why would we do that? Well, subconsciously. I mean, if, if dreams are, are the way for a brain to sort through concerns of everyday life... Aliens would certainly qualify as a concern. Yeah, and maybe our altered brain waves combined with the dream process are acting like a, a beacon for them. Great, shall we wear a tinfoil hat to bed? I thought you already did that. Yep. Tire tunnel layout. I think this is it. Mm, like rats down a hole. Oh. These tunnels access every building on campus. We gotta find Jangler before he finds a phone jack we missed. If he's down here, we'll get him. Yeah, I'll guide you through with the map. You sure you have the firepower to stop him? This ordinance will stop an elephant. All right, we'll come to tunnel with three teams. You got it. Fox's body. Jankler must have dragged him down there after Fox caught him in the computer lab. Uh, power's up. What happened? Power off? What happened? Down here, too. Deary, come in. You okay? Yes, sir. Why is the power on? We don't know. We're right here at the main line by the campus entrance. No one's touched it. They turned on the generator. You have to shut it down. Where is it? Proceed uh, a quarter mile north. Uh, it's one intersection past the cooling. Cadets, maintain positions. We spotted Jankla. He's there. He's there. He's escaping off the outside exit. He's carrying a computer. What's his position? He's traveling 20 yards north. Of the library, sir. We're nearby. We'll pick him up. No, Molly, you stay there. He can't do anything without power. You four find that generator, and that's an order. Copy that. 
Keep going north, guys. Yes, sir. Molly, we found the generator. Janklo's in the building, but may not be for long. Just get the power off now. Lay down your weapons, or we will be forced to fire. to me. Whatever reason he gave you for those orders, he lied. Jankel's very sick. Stay back, sir. You're not listening. I'm Sean P. Cavanaugh, United States Marine Corps. I outrank all of you. Orders have changed. Now lay down your weapons. Ask yourself, how's Jankel been acting lately? Military schools do not want you to be robots. They want you to be men. Men who think. Now I'm going to ask you one more time. Lay down your weapons. That's an order. It's okay, son. Lay down your weapons. trying to do now. Send a very sensitive file over the internet. Aren't there guards around this building? Yes, there should be one on each side now. What are those odds? Good work, Kavanaugh. We're on our way. Do this. Think. You're not yourself. No. I'm not myself. I'm better. We're gonna make everyone better. No, you won't win. You can't stop it. There was a federal drug investigation at Weymouth Academy, Mr. Janklo. During our pursuit of a fugitive, there was a fire. Your son, Brian, died heroically in an attempt to save the life of another cadet. We're extremely sorry for your loss. Wasted on the young. After triple testing Josh Foster and his three friends who were exposed to the signal, I tested prepubescent rats. They were also completely unaffected. Doesn't our genetic code remain the same our whole lives? It does, but our immunity changes. In particular, the thymus gland. 
when we're kids, our thymus produces lymphocytes and antibodies. But after puberty, it shrinks and lymphatic tissue becomes fat. Maybe it's because of this tissue that children are immune to the signal. Wow, so once we're old enough to reproduce, the aliens can reproduce through us. Hey, I'll be happy to give my job to a Boy Scout with a calculator. You can joke, but this information may help us develop a vaccine. Good. Keep working on that, Doctor. Now, Lucas brings me to an important point. We now know the goal of those genetically altered by the alien signal. Propagation by any means necessary. How do you feel? The electric stun shell we used would kill a normal human being, but it only knocked you out. We've examined you completely. I know you can understand me. Will you talk to me? You will remain here then. Until you cooperate, you are a threat to the United States and to the human race.